Good morning church and welcome to our little Sunday message today at the end of which we're just going to take a few moments and share communion together. So if you do not already have your, your bread or your cup of juice, your cup of wine or whatever it is you're going to use, this would be a really good time to just hit the pause button and go and get that and bring that back so that at the end of the message we can just go straight into communion together. This would be a good time to go and do that now. Okay, you got it? Great, thank you. At the beginning of the week, I had a fairly good sense of what I wanted to speak about today, but then something happened this week which changed my mind. And of course, what happened was two days ago, we celebrated VE Day. And obviously, due to the pandemic, you know, a lot of the large celebrations had to be cancelled. But in their place, what was quite lovely was instead of, instead of us all watching the TV and watching some big event somewhere in London, Actually, we replaced all that stuff with a bunch of small events and a lot of local celebrations. I think about my own street here. What we did was every every household just went out into their own garden and had a little picnic in the front grass. Me and Lauren went out on the grass. We had a wee picnic. The people across the road were out having their picnic. The people over the hedge were having their picnic. And we were all together in it while staying suitably apart. But we were together celebrating the same thing. And there was red and white and blue balloons out. There was flags hanging from people's houses. There was bunting out. You could hear Vera Lynn singing somewhere on an old record in one of the other houses. And it was just a really lovely and intimate and, and special way to celebrate this historical victory. But as the day went on, and as I thought more and more about this and just experienced the celebrations, I began to think more and more about the victory of Jesus Christ. Because in a sense, Christ had his own VE day, didn't he? Certainly wasn't victory in Europe, but you could call it victory on earth, where he won the, the great victory, the final Victory, a once and for all victory over sin, death and the powers of hell. Where Christ won for you and me salvation and freedom in his name and the chance to be reunited and reconciled to God in heaven. Christ's very own VE day. And, and, and for that reason, that's what I want to speak about today. Christ's victory. So, I'm going to read something from 2 Corinthians 2.14. Paul the Apostle says this, Thanks be to God, who always leads us as captives in Christ's triumphal procession. Let me read that again. Thanks be to God, who always leads us as captives in Christ's triumphal procession. When Paul writes this, he's only halfway through the second chapter of this letter. But, but even by this point, if you look closely at some of the things he said before, you, you can tell that he's having a bit of a hard time. He, he, he talks about, about sharing in Christ's suffering abundantly. Abundant suffering. He talks about hardships and being pressed. He talks about something, some type of trouble that happened to him when he was in Asia, where he felt so pressured, he didn't think he would survive it. And he says that he despaired even for his life. You read stuff like this, and, and the, the man almost sounds overwhelmed. He almost sounds depressed. When was the last time you went through a trouble that you just thought, I am not going to survive this. I'm overwhelmed by this. This is too much for me to bear. When was the last time you went through a trouble that led you to despair of your own life. That's what Paul is experiencing. That's what he's gone through as he's writing this. But, but look at what he says. Look at what he says within it and despite it. Thanks be to God who always leads us as captives in Christ's procession. He sounds quite positive about this, but what does it mean? What is Christ's procession? Why are we being described as being led as captives? What does all this mean? What Paul is describing here 
is a Roman triumph. And, and what happened during a Roman triumph would be that after a, a general had won a particularly important battle, or whether he had been away in a long campaign and conquered new lands or, or squashed a rebellion, something major, he was rewarded by being allowed to come back to the city of Rome and he would ride in to the city of Rome, right into the centre, and behind him, his legions would march. It's the only time ever that Roman legions were allowed in the city. And the general would ride in triumphantly, and his army would come in behind them. And then after them, there would be wagons filled with the spoils of war, maybe exotic foods that they'd brought back and discovered, or, or, or loot and gold, things that they had claimed. And then behind that, there would be the captives. There would be foreign generals and, and princes and kings and important prisoners of war that they would bring in as spoils of war to show what they had won. This was the Roman triumph. And this, this is sort of what Paul is describing here. He's talking about Christ coming in as a triumphant conqueror. He's talking about Christ marching in victory and, and displaying with him the spoils of war. And, and what I think is really interesting is that we are described as the captives. You know, given the way that I just described the Roman triumph, you might think that we would be described as, as the soldiers marching behind the general. You know, there's the general and we are part of the shining legions. But Paul doesn't describe us as that. He describes us as the captives who have been led in. And I think the reason he does this is because, because we are not the soldiers who helped Christ win this battle. We didn't go to the cross. We didn't die on the cross. That, he done that alone. No one else can claim that. Christ won this victory alone. That We are not the soldiers who fought his war. If anything, we are, we are the captives. We are the spoils of war. We are the ones who he has claimed as himself through his victory. He has claimed us. He has won us. He, we are part of his reward. Hebrews 12.2 says this, For the glory set before him, Christ endured the cross. For the glory that was set before him, he endured the cross. Have you ever realised that you are part of that glory? You are part of the glory for which Christ endured. You are part of the prize, part of the reward that, that he died for, that he fought for, that he went to the cross for. Your, your freedom, your salvation, your, your reconciliation to God is what he went to the cross for. That is part of the glorious reward that he endured for. It's wonderful, isn't it? Because sometimes we don't feel like that. Sometimes we just don't feel worthy. Sometimes we feel the way Paul's feeling. We just feel troubled and overwhelmed and like we're not going to make it. You know, we're struggling here and, and we're despairing of life because things are just against us. But but here we're reminded, you know, it's it, that is only a temporary picture. We are part of Christ's reward. We are being led in behind him. One day Jesus Christ will march to his father's throne and we will be led in behind him as the spoils of his victory presented as what he has won what he has claimed what he has saved and brought to his father that's a wonderful picture isn't it that's a wonderful a wonderful knowledge to have about who you are and what christ how christ sees you and may, maybe you're listening to this and and, and maybe you're not a follower of Jesus. Maybe you don't believe in God the same way that other people believe. Maybe this video's just been shared to you or you've picked it up somewhere on YouTube or, or something like that. And, 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 and you're not a follower of Jesus. You don't count yourself as being part of this. But you can be. And it's very simple. It's, it's as simple as A, B, C. A, to accept that we are sinful, to accept that we have made mistakes and that in God's eyes we are not perfect. Sometimes hard to accept that you're not perfect, but, 
But that's the first step in us, accepting that we are not perfect and we've made mistakes. B, believing that Jesus Christ came and died on the cross and rose again to, to make amends for those mistakes, to believe that he died for your imperfection and see to confess this to him, to confess it in prayer and to commit to follow him. In prayer, just say, Jesus, I, 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 I realise now that I've made a mistake. I realise that I'm not perfect and I, and I believe that you came, went to the cross to put it right so that I could be saved through this. I'm just going to pray a little prayer like that now. And if you're watching this and you're not a follower of Jesus, but you know there's something in it, you know there's more to it, then feel free just to pray this along in your heart. Say amen, whatever you feel comfortable with, and then we'll take communion together. Lord Jesus, we know that we are sinners. We know deep down in our heart that we have done wrong, that we've lived wrong, that we've made mistakes that we can't put right. But God, we also believe that you came among us, died on the cross, suffered on the cross, so that we could be saved and set apart for relationship with God to live in his presence. And Lord Jesus, we just commit to give you our lives. We confess our sin and we receive your free gift of forgiveness and salvation. And we ask that you would just fill us with your Holy Spirit and set us apart for your purposes and your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you are someone who just prayed along to that or, or prayed it in your heart, feel free to, to get in touch, either with the person who shared this video with you or, or get in touch through the church directly. That would be amazing if you did that. Let us just take a moment now and remember the cross. Remember the victory of Jesus Christ and how it was won and how it was claimed for us. The body of Christ that was given for us and that was broken on the cross. blood of Jesus Christ that was poured out for the forgiveness of sins and which has made a new covenant between us and God. John 3.16 tells us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Father, we thank you that you loved us enough to send us your son Jesus to die in our place, to suffer on our behalf so that we could receive the gift of life, God. And we thank you for this beautiful picture in the scriptures of Jesus after the cross as a conqueror returning back and us following behind him as, as his reward, as the spoils of the victory that he has won. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you church, stay safe and hope to see you soon. Bye.